welcome everybody to the BF Sports Analysis YouTube channel. Uh, today we have the pleasure of sitting down with uh, founder and owner, Brian Fitzpatrick, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about rugby analysis, and more specifically, uh, what are the four best stats when it comes to your rugby analysis. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get straight into it. Uh, what do you think is uh, one of the best stats uh, rugby analysts can measure? So for me, I'm thinking mainly here for people starting out in amateur rugby and like starting points and number one for me would be um, attacking 22 meter entries and defensive as well. Yeah. But typically we look at scoring efficiency and the way you measure that is are you creating the opportunities and then are you putting the opportunities away and turning them into points and 22 meter entries are really common and quite easy to understand and really easy to collect stat as well. There's not a lot of work going into that stat to then make uh, you can do that with a pen and paper. You can do that quite easily after a game, even watching a game fast forward. Really easy, really low level, but yeah. really important stat. Are you creating opportunities? Are you getting the opposition 22? Yeah, okay. Um, how many 22 meter entries typically would you have in a game for a team, let's say? So looking at 80 minutes, you're looking at, you want about eight per game is that okay. average point. Now, if you're a team that scoring um, that likes to take threes, it might be one or two less. Yeah, for a yeah. game, if you're a team that goes to the corner, it might be a little bit better. If yeah. you're a team that's stronger in relation to your league, you obviously want to be having a few more. If you're yeah. a team a bit lower, you know, that's a good opportunity to push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, having a good kicker makes a makes a big difference um, when it comes to 22 minute entries. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have a good person for kicking to touch, kind of undervalued skill. Yeah. You know, can you take it only two penalties to turn it into a 22 meter entry or is it always going to be three or four if you're a bit conservative there? I yeah, yeah. You obviously need to make touch as well, but yeah, that's a big impact one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So 22 meter entries. Yeah. That's uh, number one. And then, so number two. So it's very much connected. So like we talked about the, the connected side is, um, Opportunity creation and putting away those opportunities, 22 meter success. I mean, you can measure that in a few ways uh, points per 22 meter entry or percentage converted to tries or positive outcomes, which would be tries or penalties. Uh, four, that would be my number two go to yeah, there. Yeah. Again, really easy to collect. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Now, when you're talking about collection, what are some of the ways that you could collect the data, except for maybe some of the more obvious things, just, um, you know, post game? Yeah, so. Obviously, it's a service we provided where we look after yeah. all that collection for you and um, when you're looking to get to that higher level. But if you're doing it yourself, you've never done any analysis before, like pen and paper live is a way you can do it and track it live. Yeah. But the easy ones on video, um, going back and again, it's something you could track on times eight, times 16 speed and get through it in yeah, a really yeah. quick post game. But, but what we would use, obviously, is a video analysis software where we clip that up and target and stores and keep a good record of it in an excel file yeah, yeah. or similar sort of sheet database yeah yeah okay yeah so options even if you don't have say um you know analysis software or something like that you could always go to the old ways and just good old-fashioned pen and paper on the sideline yeah uh, if you're looking to get into it yeah exactly and then it's about keeping good records after that whether that's in a file in cabinet or, or in the cloud yeah. yeah yeah exactly okay yeah interesting um i'm sure there's probably a lot of people who never really even thought about just being on the sideline, uh, recording everything uh, physically. Um, but interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, it's, I suppose it's that you can almost have mentally in your head as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her game. Yeah. Um, are we turning those opportunities into tries? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. have a feel for it anyway without having the number in your head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a good one to probably have a number on, you know, yeah, over yeah. a season to know is that something we're good or bad at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. All right. Um, so, Number three. Number three. So back to the original creation of opportunities is line breaks per game. And again, looking at how simple that is to collect, that's yeah, something again you can watch times eight or record live. And if you keep a record up, all the better. But it's a really good, uh, particularly at the amateur levels, it's a really good symbol of, you know, is your attack working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In bad weather, it's going to be pretty low. In good weather, it might be a little bit higher. So we know from our data at a pretty good amateur level, you're looking at two point three per game, which might surprise people how low that number sounds. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know sometimes you're gonna have six in a game, and then sometimes you might have one or zero because it's raining and yeah. it's a sloppy day, particularly 
the Irish clients we typically work with. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's yeah, that's a a really good stat for just going. Is our attack working? And then similarly on defense, are we doing that one? There's other ways to, of course, measure it, like carry meters and stuff like that. Yeah. But again, a lot more work goes into that stat um, to measure: Are you winning game lines? Are you winning meters? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is, it is a great stat and something we collect and deliver to clients, but. If you're you doing yourself, line breaks are easy to collect and easy to keep a yeah, good record yeah. of yeah. both sides of the ball. Yeah, now, now that you sort of mention it, even though I've been doing analysis now for a couple of years, um, 2.3, it does sound weirdly low. Like, especially just just remembering some of the games that I've filmed over the past couple of years, like it definitely feels like there's a lot more sort of those exciting moments in a game where, you know, someone breaks the line and, and scores a really cool try. Um, but yeah, very interesting. Yeah, it's just the lower the level, the more that number will actually go up, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'd say tackle technique would be something that's really good at a higher level. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like defensive shape. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's something that relatively moves up. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you know, an under 14 team still has a really good ball carrier. Or yeah. somebody who can break tackles, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, it's kind of a relative stat, like um, teams that are maybe international, I think it's a little bit higher say than um even say a uh, professional club level yeah yeah again because they just have more time together and more tuned in as a defensive system but more mistakes higher co- quality skill probably at the international level but yeah less cohesion and things like that and that's yeah, what the defense yeah. really brings together okay yeah um now th- i guess there isn't much debate for this topic in general but what would you consider to actually be a, a line break for a team because sometimes you might see like sort of like a half break in a game and maybe a stats guy up in the booth thinks like ah that's 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 probably a line break and they check it off what well, what is like sort of your the definition of a line break yeah so i suppose for us we have a lot of analysts working together and we have to be really clear about what our definition yeah, is yeah, yeah. and reduce that ambiguity ambiguity yeah um, so for us like really clean line break is it a guy getting through that line and it's like we like it's the guy in the next line of defense making the tackle rather than the guy in the front line yeah or he's fully turned around the defender's fully turned around into a chase back to get him back from the front line because yeah, yeah. props do make line breaks the other time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I i remember a couple of scenarios where i i had actually done a game and then this was really early on when i first started and I think I had actually, I had sent you a game or something like that. And you're like, oh, well, you, you, you probably should have given him a line break. And then I look back at the video and it was like, it was like a, a prop or a lock or something like that, yeah. where they did clearly break the line, but it just wasn't necessarily the speed at which yeah. I was used to. So then I was like, oh yeah, that, that wasn't line break. I just didn't like in the moment, you know, yeah. realize this was obviously, this was in like the first, you know, few weeks that I was working uh, for BS Sports Hall, So I remember that. Yeah. 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 And the other one that's probably a bit of ambiguity around it is the ones out wide where yeah. yeah that winger does make the tackle but he's made 20 meters before he made the tackle yeah it's soft and yeah yeah there is a bit of a visual cue on that we're a bit more clear on it inside but you got to make up your own definition but the big yeah. thing is it is it the same in september as it is in may yeah and that's the thing you got to get right in terms of are you improving or does your definition change yeah yeah um so that's a big part when you are collecting any of these stats is what is your definition yeah and being clear on that and having it written down in such a way yeah. that there is consistency one within yourself and two within your team if you're working as a team yeah, yeah. okay yeah I understand. um okay and then last but not least number four so again very much linked line break conversion to try so mm, yeah yeah are you executing with that opportunity you're creating? So if you're having 10 line breaks, we're only scoring two tries. Mm. You got to look at, okay, well, maybe we're doing a lot of w- good work there to set it up, but we're not having the support lines, whatever it is, but it's just yeah. a good measure of, are we making use of our good attack play? Yeah. And conversely, of course, on the defensive side, if you're going conceding two line breaks a game, but both of them are always turning into tries or that's above, we have an average of about 35%, if that's quite high over the season. Yeah. And again, that's something that's definitely relative to level where lower levels it's a bit higher. Yeah. But um yeah, once you get once you start noticing that, it's like, okay, are we is our defense system built in such a way that's high risk, high reward? And we're okay with it being five, ten percent higher. You probably shouldn't be much happier with it being above fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. But if it's um 
you know, if that's not a style of your system, you definitely want it lower. And yeah. maybe there is some errors there. Maybe that's work rate went post line break. People aren't working back for whatever reason. But it's a really good, it's a really good stat for highlighting what you want out of that that line break conversion stat. Yeah. I go to it. People doing their jobs or people reacting and lots of teams talk about work rate and things like that. It's a really again simple stat to collect those number of line breaks how many ended in tries and we wouldn't we'd collect it as by the end of the possession right as yeah. well rather than you know did that turn into a try you don't want necessarily people to force pass or force off those to score off the first phase when yeah, yeah. they might have you covered in such a right. way that you shouldn't give that pass you know right sometimes it's good the best option is to go to ground of course and then so we do it by the end of the possession so line break possessions and line breaks convert to tries and yeah so it could be like someone breaks the line and then they don't score until like four or five or six phases later yeah that would still be considered a conversion yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. under our definitions and i think it's the best way to do it uh-huh. yeah yeah but again it makes sense measures the whole team rather than the guy at maybe your scroll map on the inside line you know right right so yeah. it's a better measure i think there yeah 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 okay yeah cool um so yeah there we go. Four, uh, four best stats uh, you can collect as a, as a rugby analyst, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, go back to the old ways, just a little bit of, a little bit of pen and paper. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll put a, maybe a summary uh, of everything that we just talked about uh, in the description uh, for the video. Um, but there you go. Uh, make sure to, of course, like and subscribe. Uh, if you like to, this content or anything else that we have, uh, we also have our Tools of an Analyst series going, uh, just how to set up a tripod, how to set up a, a vantage point, and uh, other things of sort of that nature. This would, might be considered a part of that series. Um, but yeah, if you really enjoyed it, then uh, like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Brian. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for watching that video. If you'd like to see more content about rugby and rugby analysis, make sure you subscribe to our channel and follow us on all of our social media. If you have any ideas about rugby-related content that you'd like to see, leave us a comment below. Until next time, bye for now.